How you doing, everybody? I am ABC Action News Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips. I'm hearing a little bit of a feedback here. Close it. You go ahead. Got it? No, not yet. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Take two. How you doing, everybody? I'm ABC Action News Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips, and welcome to the 51st annual Gasparilla Festival of the Arts Showcase. Tonight, we're our virtual, so we decided it would be a great opportunity to get everybody involved in a virtual scheme, obviously. So we're going to offer you the ability to chat with us, ask questions, give some comments, some feedback, and let us know how you're doing in a, obviously just a crazy year. It was just a year ago that we were behind us back in the Julian Park area, which was just an amazing afternoon. And I will be honest, last year when I was invited to MC the event, I had never been to the event before. I know, blasphemy, right? And I had lived in this area for nearly 25 years. Well, I will tell you, I was missing out on an amazing event. I have told everybody I can find, including total strangers, I walk up to, I mean, honestly, this is the event of all events. And it isn't just the fact that we have some of the best artists in the world. It isn't the fact that we've got such a great venue. The honestly, the way I look at it is the volunteers and the organizers of this event are second to none. I have never in my life worked with a group of people who care so much about what they're doing, the hard work that goes into it, and obviously the passion that they have for the art community. So what we're doing today and again tomorrow in a virtual level obviously is celebrating those folks who have participated this year and in previous years and again over the last five decades. And on a personal scale, last year I brought my family and I have six kids ranging from 26 to six. And what was really amazing is bringing those children into an area that they had never seen before. They had gone into the area where the kids could be involved and go in and actually talk with the artists and select a piece of art that talked to them, that touched them. And, and honestly, I thought my six-year-old, you can't keep her attention for 10 seconds. You just never thought that was gonna happen. She was in there for 15 minutes talking to the artist, grilling the artist, getting everything she could find, picked out her perfect piece of art, and then went home and Googled all the information they could find. So it really opened up avenues that I never dreamed would be there for a child that age. And I have the older children that were in the same way. So, so bottom line, as we continue to celebrate the victories tonight and celebrate the artists that are participating in this event, I've got to tell you on a personal level, this has been a spectacular event and I, I've enjoyed it immensely. And granted, we all know this year has been very, very tough times. And, and that's one of the things that's important to remember for the artists who have had such a tough year that we've really heard so far that since the beginning of the festival and even before today, that apparently the artists are doing quite well. And there's been a, an area in the community that has really gathered and purchased much of this art and helped out the people who we depend on. And that this year has been a tough thing to do. But I will tell you, at least for right now, we're gonna go from talking about the artist, celebrating the artist, giving you the victors and the winners. And we will be doing that in a couple of minutes with our president and vice president. But I think to start this party, and I will tell you, I can also say that this is probably the biggest party crowd that I've ever worked with. Denny, right over there at the top of the list. <laughs> There's no doubt they are at the top of the list. So of course you would expect there to be an official Gasparilla Festival of the Arts drink. And one of our co-chairs, Tara, she is in charge of making what is supposed to be, well, you're, you're calling it, it's a, it's a mule, right? Chip because mule. Because it has a kick, I'm assuming? Yeah. All right, well, well tell us a little bit about it and, and let us see what you got going over there. Um, well, thank you. Um, yeah, so we put together the GFA Mule this year and uh, it's delightful and refreshing. Um, it has Tito's vodka, um, some ginger beer, uh, lots of lime juice, and a little blue curacao. Okay, so what we want you to do, because this is a virtual event, we're going to give you a, a little bit to do this. We want you to go into your liquor cabinet, go into where you keep everything stashed, and we want you to break this stuff out because we want you to make it 
as we go along and we are gonna have one gigantic virtual toast to celebrate the success of this year and hopefully many, many other years. So first we start with the vodka. This now is we really have- all we need, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have Tito's here, but any vodka will do. All right, so we're starting with the vodka and from there, what else? I'd say limes or lime juice. Um, the more fresh lime you have, the better. Okay. Um, hopefully you have some ginger beer. That's gonna be, that might be a challenging one. I don't know. If not, you could do a little Sprite. You could okay. do, uh, That'll know. work. Yeah, Figure most folks water. will have some kind of a Sprite or a 7-Up yeah. or something. So you've got your vodka, your lime juice, and your Sprite or your ginger beer. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have that. And if you have something fun and blue, great. Okay. If you have it left over from Gasparilla, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So, so the blue stuff. <laughs> All right. And then, and then you've got lemonade over there. Or is that lime? We actually added some limeade just to make it a little um, tart and sweet at the same time. Okay. Tart and sweet. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So everybody get your stuff together. We'll give you a couple more seconds to get everything together. And then we are going to make this together. She's going to tell you exactly how you do it. And then we're going to have a giant toast. And I know for a fact that one bottle of vodka is not nearly enough for this room. No. I can just tell you that. I, I, I have no doubt in my mind. All right. So so, so where do we start with? So I'm going to start with some ice and put a lot of ice in your shaker tin. If you want to do it with um, a pint glass, that's fine too. That always works. So I've got lots of good ice. I'm going to go ahead and take the most important ingredient <laughs> and do a long pour. For the record, you really at one point pour. in your life were a bartender. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no way you could do that without having those skills. Yeah. That was a long pour. Honestly, long pour. how many shots were in that? <laughs> it's uh, been a long year. So <laughs> we needed a long pour. <laughs> and I'm making some for my friends. So it's not just for myself. Okay. I'm going to um, put some blue clear style, just kind of <laughs> make that nice and fun and blue. Um, Based on the laughter over here, I think they've already been partaking in this yeah. well before this started. This is I had the to fifth test trial. It. I had to test it. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, I just also want to give a fair science warning, Bill Nye Science Guy warning. If you're going to use ginger beer or Sprite, don't put that in your shaker tin and then shake it. It causes, you know, Makes sense. So we're not going to do that. What does it do again? It causes what? It goes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I am going to put some limeade in there. Um, kind of cut the blue carousel a little bit. You guys getting this at home? Especially the long pour. I'd love to see that one. And then lots oh, yeah. and lots of lime. Okay. Lots of lime, really? Lots of lime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then my buddy Clay, he's a committee member. He cut up my limes for me. Thank you, so Clay. Kind, you know, that's what friends are for. Awesome. So lots and lots of lime. Okay. Lime so, the better. So, so far we've got the vodka, the lime, lots and lots of lime the blue curacao and did you put the uh the, lim the limeade in i did put limeade, limeade in okay yeah. the ginger beer goes busy. at the end yes ginger beer it'll be just to top it okay and then shake a shake a shake a how long do you need to shake it um it doesn't need to be shaked that long okay yeah right. so, now my glass is up Ooh. got it spilled a little okay got my strainer I don't know if the camera can see. Oh, I'm also featuring Duncan McClellan hand-blown wine glasses here mm -hmm. to serve. Nice. Right, so you got this beautiful blue drink and then another wonderful noise. Top of a little ginger beer. Just a little bit on the top. Yep. And then you're going to take your lime wheels, also pre-cut by clay, and garnish. Nice. Yeah. I think, Denny, you got to come over here. Denny is the... I think yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. Denny's, yeah. I'm going to make some for the vice president. <laughs> okay. All right. Here Those will be for you too. You okay. can get, oh, I'm not allowed to. I'm on the clock. Oh. Uh, I, I truly am. I, I think I'd get in trouble. So I'll just <laughs> gonna, gonna let, let me know. Mm. Smells uh, oh, that's good. good. Tartan. Oh, I can taste it. That's a heavy pour. <laughs> really? It doesn't taste like a heavy pour mm. to me. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> That's exceptional. Good. Good. That's really good. Not too sweet, right? No, it's not at all. Okay. I mean, it's really good. All right. So, so there you have it. 
So are you going to continue to make for the, uh, the entire masses? I am, but I have to first make the president and the vice president. Makes perfect sense because they're, they're because there. John and Jamie will be over here in a second. Yeah. Look how pretty it looks in Duncan McCormick's office. How's it going at home, everybody? Is it going well? Did you try that long pour and it ended up all over the floor? Because that's looked like what <laughs> it would have happened wow. to me. That's it. That's the GFA mule, guys. Awesome. Tara, thank you very much. Thank nice you. job. Nice job. <laughs> well, here, I we take this. I'll put this right here. I will hold these two and give these to the Gentlemen. president, the vice president. OK, so as Tara mentioned, thank you very much. Uh, we'd now like to introduce the president and the vice president of the Gasparilla Festival of Arts. We've got John and Tara. Take your drinks. There you go. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Thank you, Dennis and Terry, for that really awesome and funny entry. I'm John Shuffle. I'm the president of the board of directors. I'm Jamie Jenkins, vice president of the board of directors. Jamie, cheers. cheers. And cheers to all of you who are joining us tonight. It's so nice to have so many of you here. Um, you saw images as we were, were waiting for people to sign on from last year's festival. And, you know, we, we can't begin to talk about tonight until we, we talk a little bit about last year. Last year was our 50th anniversary. We relocated to the beautiful Julian B. Lane Riverfront Park, which is where we're broadcasting from this weekend. And it was an amazing weekend. We had beautiful weather. We had um, record turnout, basically, for, for, from what everybody, from what everybody uh, who was here, who's been a part of GFA, they all felt like it was just incredible. Uh, there were very few hiccups, which was incredible. And for the most part, the artists reported really great sales. Um, we heard nothing but great feedback. And then the next day after our festival, March 2nd, was the first reported case of COVID in Hillsborough County. And after that, um, there was one other arts festival and then all the arts festivals canceled. And the artists have really been affected by very deeply by this past year and their incomes have been way down. <laughs> so we started planning towards a, a pandemic a friendly festival that um, we didn't quite know how that was going to look. So there was a lot of, of um, back and forth and looking at different scenarios, if we were going to do something that was both in person or virtual. And we basically decided to do an in person event and we set a decision point for December. And Jamie, you want to chime in? So we, we played the game of pivot. How many times can you pivot in your planning? And I know that's the word of the year, but we had to really examine what we were doing, who we were doing it for, and go back to our mission of being there for the artists in our community. And in doing that, we had to look at, is it a right thing to do to be in person? And then could we be virtual? What would it look like? How would we do that? Do we have the people that know how to do this? Yes. So since we are all, all volunteer organization, um, finding the skill set and figuring out what to do, how to do it, when to do what, it was, it was a challenge. It, it was quite the challenge. <laughs> and, you know, we made that decision in December to go virtual and focus all of our attention on creating a fully virtual festival. And we... The thing that kept coming up uh, with each passing day is we didn't know what we didn't know. <laughs> it was this multifaceted beast that kept growing 10 tentacles every day, it seemed like. It was crazy. And we couldn't do that without our volunteers. And we have an amazing group of volunteers. Thank you all. I know there's some in the room that are here helping us today. Um, so we have an amazing board. We have 17 voting board members, but then we also have an advisory board, people who've served on our board in the past and that still come and help us and advise us and contribute. And we couldn't do this without all of them. And then we also have an amazing 
committee. So the committee is the group that puts on our actual live festival. And since we don't have a live festival this year and that pivot game, we had to work with this committee and figure out, could we do this virtually? And figure out who on our committee had skills that can help us do this. So we dug deep as we always do, because we love the arts and our committee was there for us. And we thank them. Yes, it's we have over 100 volunteers. And again, can't stress enough that we are all volunteers. Um, it's an extraordinary group of, of people and we all come from different backgrounds. Um, I'm a designer, Jamie. I'm a recovering accountant. <laughs> And we have lawyers, we have teachers, uh, we have artists, we have um, project managers, uh, all variety of backgrounds. But the one thing that brings us all together is our love and passion for the arts. And it's just an extraordinary group of people. Uh, we also want to thank our sponsors. So we have our title sponsor, Raymond James. And they've been our title sponsor for, I think, 20 some odd years. Um, we appreciate their support tremendously. The city of Tampa, Tampa, Hillsborough County, Florida. And then we have um, a whole variety of sponsors, many of whom have been sponsors for many years. Um, we have a, uh, it's a mix of corporate sponsors as well as many individual sponsors. So one of the things that we realized in, in, in many of our decisions this year were based on what was best for the public and what was best for the artists. And going back to the artists, we realized how important um, our prize money is for them. We, we give out um, the most prize money of any arts festival. And so we initially didn't think that we would be able to hand out we wouldn't be able to, to to hand out the full prize money and we found a way and that way is, is through sponsorship um we have seen such a great outpouring of support from our sponsors and that's allowed us to be the first virtual arts festival that is during and awarding prize money and we are awarding the full eighty thousand dollars tonight and uh we're so proud and we thank you very much all of you And I'm gonna cheers to that. That's our bartender making noises. <laughs> All right, so now. Still making drinks. <laughs> now, shoo shoo away. Okay, bye bye. Now we're gonna begin the award show. Advance. So our first award is um, the Lightning Foundation sponsors our Scholastic Showcase program. And this is a program that's geared towards uh, K through 12 students. And each year an artist is given a prize and then that school is given a prize. So this year, the Lightning Foundation Scholastic Showcase Award, the student award of $1,000 goes to Chao Mali, Chao Mao. And the Lightning Foundation's Classic Showcase High School Representative Award for the school. And that's a, an award of $500 and that goes to Venice High School in Sarasota County. So next we have 30 merit awards. Each are $1,300. I'm going to announce the first four awards and then hand it off to our three amazing co-chairs, Dion, Denny, and Tara. And then I'll be back to present some of the top awards. And then our juror is going to present the top three awards. So tonight, um, I'm pleased that, that 
Our event is being sponsored by Harbinger Sign, who happens to be both a client and a vendor of mine. And they um, graciously increased their sponsorship this year to be the presenting sponsor for the showcase. So the Harbinger Sign Award of Merit goes to Alfredo Alia. We have a little bit of delay in this end. All right, so um, my dear friend, David Rakofsky, uh, who I've known for many years, is the owner of Wellington Counseling Center, but he and his wife were able to come and visit for our 50th festival last year, uh, which was really amazing. So I'm pleased that they became a sponsor this year. So the Wellington Counseling Center Award of Merit goes to the amazing Kelly Hobgood. And by the way, Callie, I believe this is the fourth year in a row that she's won a merit award, which is pretty awesome. The, my sister and I sponsored an award in our dad's memory. So the Harold Shuffle Memorial Award of Merit goes to Sandra Rodriguez and Emmanuel Diaz. <laughs> they were our festival image artists two years ago. Um, amazing couple. And the last award I'm gonna present, um, like many of you, our GFA family has been, um, uh, has had to deal with a lot of loss this past year. So we decided to name an award in that memory. So the, the Remembering GFA Family and Friends Award of Merit goes to Janet Herman. So now to present the next group of merit awards, I'd like to present our one of our co-chairs, Dion Bent. My name is Dion Bent, and I am one of the co-chairs for this year's 2021 51st Raymond James Gasparilla Festival of the Arts. So my first award, the Anne Marie Campbell and Sam Gunta Award of Merit goes to Tanya Doskova. The Articles Award Art Gallery Award of Merit goes to Ryan Young. The Diane Buckley Award of Merit goes to Michael Womack. The Emily Schreider Award goes to Amanda Ocalt. The Aaron Conley Award goes to Matthew Cornell. The Five Studios Award of Merit goes to Kwame Po, William Kwame Po. <laughs> Our In Memory of Justin Paul Brown Award of Merit goes to John Smith. <laughs> the Jane and Vance Arnett Award of Merit goes to 
Adam Kroll. I'm now going to go ahead and introduce my next co-chair for this year, Denny, come on down. Hey, how are you guys? My name is Denny Humphries, co-chair for the 51st annual Gasparilla Festival of the Arts. It is a pleasure to be here. Um, it has been a long time coming. Uh, I've been with the entertainment this whole time, and to jump into co-chair has been quite the role. So I can only appreciate Tara and Dion and John and Jamie. They have been a, a great resource, and you see the festival coming together. You have to appreciate everybody that's involved. Um, so I would like to introduce the next award um, for Jennifer um, Mullen and Mark Dahl. And Susan Gott. All right, and the next award for um, presented from JJ Taylor. Julia Gilmore. And the next award, uh, Juanita Casipo Memorial. Goes to Pam Fox. Uh, next award, Karen Price goes to Mikal Mitchell. Michael Mitchell. Michael Mitchell. Kelly M. Klein Memorial goes to Tor Tony Etheron. Tony. And this is um, two years ago. He did have the best in, war uh, best in show as well. So it should be a repeat re award for Tony. Three times as well. Three time winner for Tony. And Lisa and Chuck Carver award goes to Aaron Heckenborg. And next, I would love to bring up the next co-chair, Tara. Hey, hey. Um, I just want to say thank you. This has been a crazy year, but I'm very grateful um, for our board and our amazing president and vice president and secretary and my other co-chairs, Dion and Denny. It's been a real pleasure. Um, I came up through this organization through the Emerging Artists Program, and it is such an amazing and unique and special program. Um, and Nanika Jones is here with us tonight. She's our festival Ooh. image um, artist. And I had the phenomenal pleasure of working with her um, as an emerging artist just three years ago. I can't even believe it's it, two, my, my goodness. So anyway, what a, an amazing thing. So that's what, that's the power of the Gasparilla Festival of the Arts and the power of this amazing community of Tampa Bay. So onward. <laughs> the next award is the Marsha and Jack Cohen Award of Merit. James MacArthur Cole. The Red Fox Delivery Award of Merit goes to Rick Abrams. <laughs> the Sandra Swoika Award of Merit goes to Karen Hibbs.
And the Sheila Sieg and John Mullen Award of Merit goes to Larry Allen. Envelope, please. The Shoemaker Loop and Kendrick LLP Award of Merit. And I just want to point out that they're a very long time sponsor of this festival and have also supplied many of a volunteer and ACT, excuse me. They have been a primary sponsor of our ACT program. Glenna Adkins. And the ta-da award of merit goes to, this is a, a special award for us because we really adore Megan. She's an amazing local artist and she's also on our board. Sam Jones, the fourth. The Tampa Bay Times Award of Merit goes to Deanna Goldsmith. <laughs> the Tampa Electric Antico's People's Gas Award of Merit goes to Jennifer Lashbrook. The Bank of Tampa, who's also an amazing sponsor of ours, Award of Merit, Robin Frisella. Oh, and the Barrymore Hotel Award of Merit goes to Al Athlone Clark. And the WUSF Award of Merit goes to Kathleen Brodeur. And the Zuku Sushi Award of Merit goes to Michael Delgado. Awesome. Now I'm the vice president and president will come back. <laughs> Hush tones. Hi. Welcome back. So we're going to talk a little bit about the top awards. Are you ready? Do we have a slideshow? We're ready. Ooh, my drink has reappeared. Thank you, drink. <laughs> I have a drink fairy. <laughs> They, they wanted me to snort. It came. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Always fun to make the president snort. Yes. Jamie's going to present the first one. So this year was a very tough year for my family. We lost my mom last month to cancer. And so I sponsored the Emerging Artists Program in her name. My mom... Um, Oh, I'm going to cry. Um, so my mom loved art. She started doing watercolors later in life, and she was an amazing artist, actually applied this year to the Emerging Artist Program. But yes. So in her name, I sponsored, and I want to help other artists do what my mom couldn't do. So the Emerging Artist Award goes to Anna Rodriguez. 
Okay. I got through that. Okay, I will leave it to John to do the top awards. Thank you all. Thank you, Jamie. Um, Jamie's been uh, such a blessing this past year. And uh, I, I know what she and her family have been going through. It's been very, very challenging, um, but she, GFA was something that, that she, it was her happy place to go to um, during all those difficult times. So um, she never stops with her um, commitment to GFA and has put in countless hours as have many, many of our volunteers. Thank you, Jamie. The, uh, we had um, another member of our family this year um, that passed away, Suzanne Camp Crosby. She was an artist, um, a photographer, and she actually exhibited in our show uh, for several years and I, I believe it was an award winner. And um, she became a member of our board and stayed involved until this past year um, when she had an illness. And um, unfortunately, um, she has left us. So we have the um, many members of the community as well as the board um, raised some funds so that we could do an award in her memory of $2,000. So the 2000, the uh, Suzanne Camp Crosby Memorial Award goes to John Deng. The President's Award, which um, I, I think some artists have been confused, um, the juror picks all of the awards. So even though this says the President's Award, I'm not choosing this award. Um, so the juror selects all of them. So the President's Award of $3,000 goes to Jeff Buddy and Chris Rohn. And the final award I'm going to present before the juror um, presents our top three awards. Roddy Brownlee Reed um, has been, it was a big part of our festival for many years. And a, when he passed away, a grant was established in his name. And each year they contribute uh, money towards an award in his, in his memory. And the intent is for this award to go to an artist that has been a long-standing part of our festival. So I'm extremely proud to present this award to an artist who um, I've gotten to know very well. And she, this artist is, is a beautiful human being. Um, the Rodney Brownlee Reed Award of Artistic Excellence for $4,000 goes to Beth Garcia. So now I'd like to introduce our juror of our virtual show, Dr. Nadia Rivera Fella, who's going to be joining us via Zoom. As soon as we can pull her up, I will step away. Hi, Nadia. Hello. Hi. Thank you for the introduction. Hold on a second. Can you, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, great. My name is Nadia rivera Fala, and I am the Associate Curator of Contemporary Art at the Cleveland Museum of Art. So joining you from wintry, freezing Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, and it is an honor to announce the year's top awards for the recipients of the 2021 Gasparilla Festival of the Arts. Um, the first award I'll present, the Mayor's Award for $5,000, goes to Jenny Henley for Untitled Akai.
the Board of Directors Award of $9,000 goes to Nika Jones for Destroy the Myth. Nadia, are you gonna? Actually, okay. I'm just. I was just waiting for the slide. This is a suspenseful pause. But the top award, <laughs> the Raymond James Financial Best of Show Award of fifteen thousand dollars. I was very honored to award to award to. Nicario Jimenez for Immigration Latin Triumph. Congratulations, Nicario. This was an incredible work and I was honored to be able to award it Best in Show. And uh, just a few more. Not just speaking more. Nadi, would you like to give some comments about the festival in general? Sure. Yeah, I, it's such an honor to have been invited and I thank the festival organizers for having me and for allowing me to jury this festival, this very rich festival. I know that this has been a very tough year on many levels. I know for myself and for many others. So it was truly a bright spot and a pleasure to participate in this year's festival. There was such a wide range of dynamic artwork by an extremely diverse and talented pool of artists. And this was a factor that made the decisions of choosing and awarding the awards all the more difficult. My experience of looking through all of the virtual submissions was really shaped and guided by each individual artist. So I feel really privileged to have had the chance to peek into some of their studios and get to know their practices. And I, I was able to do this through the photographs that they uploaded, the videos, the written narratives that each um, artist provided for me to review. So it was a huge pleasure to really learn a great deal about some of the mediums that I wasn't super knowledgeable about, like jewelry, um, music, you know, woodworking, furniture, things that you know I don't come in contact a great deal in my day to day as a curator. So it was such a pleasure to see the commitment to some of their crafts that these artists have. Um, in all, I was glad that we were able to give so many awards to so many deserving artists. And as, um, as everyone mentioned, what was really a tough year. So I, it was a pleasure to have been involved in something that, you know, could give back to artists who are so talented and deserving of the award money. Um, so I wish everyone a happy and healthy remainder of the year. And thanks again to the festival organizers for inviting me and to all of the artists who generally generously shared their work. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, we really appreciate you being our first ever virtual festival juror. And you've been 
a pleasure to work with and we appreciate you putting up with um uh learning along with us um so as with every aspect of our festival we ha we had to reinvent how we did our juroring process and um i find it interesting so we have a different juror each year and the our best in show winner this year uh was actually our number two uh, winning artists last year get second prize and our our number two artist this year anika jones who's in the room with us congratulations anika <laughs> last year anika was our number three artist so um i find it interesting that uh that that you know the jurors had such similar selections so an another interesting thing um, about our best in show artists. So to step back, um, since you know we couldn't have an in-person event and our sponsors, we always invite to this event. Um, instead of, of doing that, we thought, what could we do that's a little special for them? So we created gift baskets, um, which had a variety of items. But um, to make it even more special, we we asked artists um, if they would be willing to donate some art um, valued at $75 or less. And, um, and we let them know that we, we know that it's been a tough year and you know, this, you know, if, if it's too much of an ask, you know, you can say no. And we were blown away by the generosity of the artists. Um, there was one artist who even gave us, uh, we did 50 gifts at baskets and she gave us 50 prints and 50 t-shirts. So every sponsor was able to receive a piece of original art. Um, and in addition to that, we had um, a variety of, of pieces um, and many of them actually exceeded the $75 amount. So again, we were extremely blown away. We offered to pay for shipping and um, the, many of the artists said, no, no, I'm including the shipping um, just Thank you to all of you that, that did that. But um, one of the items that was donated was a piece by um, our Best in Show winner, Nicario. And we decided that, that piece should go to Raymond James. And this was before we knew that he was an award winner. And so that piece is actually going to live in the uh, personal collection of Tom and Mary James, which is housed at Raymond James Financial. So um, that's just a really, a uh, great bonus, I think, for for Nicario. Um, in addition to the awards that we announced tonight, there is going to be a purchase award from the Tampa Museum of Art. They are purchasing, as they did last year, they are purchasing one of the juried pieces and it will become a part of their permanent collection. And they will be making that purchase in the following weeks. So we will, we will once we know that, we will get the word out. Um, additionally, we plan to award a GFA collegiate scholarship in the amount of $2,500. And we should be announcing that before our first festival ends on March 21st. So now I'd like to introduce a dance troupe. And what's the name? Poetica. Poetica. Uh, they're gonna present a lovely presentation that they filmed earlier today. Enjoy. artists and also to of course purchase any of the art these artists can create it's really just an amazing experience obviously maybe not quite the real thing like we've had in the previous 50 years 
But on the other side of the coin, on a day like today when it was awfully cloudy and rainy, it really gave a lot of folks a chance to stay at home and just kind of scroll through and see just how amazing the festival is and has been for over five decades. Now we're going to change our direction just a little bit and we're going to invite the folks from Poetica. Now you may have seen some of these dancers if you were here at the festival last year. The entire group was there. We've got three or four of beautiful, beautiful dancers and they actually were putting together part of a of a image that was going on over the summer where when there was an outdoor dance experience going on during coronavirus to keep everything safe but still have an opportunity to express dance and to get folks involved. And what they're gonna be doing now is showing you a glimpse of that performance. Everybody at home, this is Poetica.
Thank you, Poetica, for that poetic performance. Nice. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> I worked on that since I messed up their name earlier. Yeah, you know, John, I wanted to mention something. So this is only the second year that I've been involved in this event. And the one word that I would use to describe this entire crew is family. It, it really is. And when I watched the announcement of Anika, winning her award, I saw tears. And I, this, is, this is a woman who just a couple of years ago went through the Emerging Artist Award and then just graduated from University of Tampa just recently in the last year. So, I mean, she's so young and so talented. And I think it's important to remember, this isn't just judges and, and, and folks in the Bay Area. This is national judges and ones that were 
different from previous years, and yet the talent is just rising to the top. So I want to, I want to congratulate Anika and all of the winners because there were so many spectacular artists. And, and again, I, I repeat this, in watching this group and watching the camaraderie and the love between each other, it, it's just absolutely amazing. So I wanna give them a round of applause to all the volunteers, to all the folks here. Because it, it, it shows completely and it, and it really is heartwarming. So congratulations to everyone. And we'll be back here again tomorrow. And, you know, hopefully next year we can combine this virtual element, which I think is kind of a cool thing because it allows folks at home, maybe who can't make it here, to still see what's going on and partake in, in this event. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. So hopefully next year, uh, that's the way things play out. But again, I just want to thank you all for, for letting me take part in this today. And we'll be back tomorrow with, with more fun and more artists and more music. Uh, thank you, Denny or Dennis for Denny. <laughs> we have a Denny. With one Dennis. N, it is Denny. <laughs> thank you, Dennis, for being our MC uh, last year and this year. Um, you, you're fantastic, and uh, we're glad to welcome you to the GFA family. Thank you. Um, and we are family. Um, I have developed many wonderful friendships um, with many of our people, and it's been very difficult this year. Not. Most of our meetings, have, actually all of our meetings have been via video call. And um, it, it's been really wonderful to be around some of them this weekend. Um, and, you know, you don't realize um, at times what's missing until it actually is, is back again. And it's, I've just felt really energized having them around. Um, and some of them are in the, right here in the audience. Um, Anyway, before we sign off, um, I just want to uh, add to what Dennis said. This virtual platform that we have adopted this year is something uh, that, you know, hopefully next year we're, we're in person again. I, I believe we will be. But this virtual platform has so many wonderful aspects to it um, that we will continue using it going forward. So it's an extension of our festival. Uh, it allows the opportunity for artists to both pre-sell and post-sell. You know, oftentimes somebody will come to the festival and they'll be thinking about a piece and sleep on it overnight and intend to come back here on Sunday and something comes up and they can't get here. And then we get emails from them or calls saying, trying to describe the piece because they want to buy it. And this is a great opportunity for them, for the, the public to, um, to think about their decisions and then go ahead and buy it online. So, um, you, you know, it, it really is, it has a lot of great benefits. Um, I learned many things about artists that I thought I knew um, what their work was about, um, but I learned so much more just by watching their videos and reading more about their work on their events and e-shops. So I encourage you all to check out all of the amazing artists in their shops. Um, learn about them. And um, if you have the means, please uh, consider adding some art into your life. Art has the power to um, bring a community together and it has the power to heal. And this past year has shown, I think that we all could use some healing. So I know that art brings joy and inspiration and love into my life. And I continue to add to my art collection from our amazing artists. And I hope that you will consider doing so as well. So thanks for joining us tonight. Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to all of the members who have spent so many hours this past year. Thank you and have a good night.